Hello and welcome to my fifth video in using Blender 2.6. Today I'm going to be talking about using edit mode um, to create custom objects. And this is really the meat and bones of using Blender and modeling anything in 3D. So um, without further ado, when you launch Blender you get a cube always and a lamp and a camera, as I've said many times. Um, and the cube is really a good place to start for modeling any object you can possibly think of. The cube has, uh, or is made of six sides, and all sides are called faces in 3D. But every face has four sides, and sides are called edges. Any um, boundary between two polygons, in other words, every face is a polygon, um, is called an edge. And any time an edge ends is called a vertex. Now there's so, so there's three properties of um, or of three properties of geometry of any object, uh, so which are faces and edges and vertexes or vertices. Um, and to see these uh, sub object kind of uh, objects, sub object objects, uh, you uh, can go down to uh, this object mode menu because uh, we're currently in object mode and I'm going to switch it to edit mode. There's a quick way of doing that. If I press tab, it does the same thing. So anytime you're in object mode, which you are right now, and you press tab, it goes into edit mode. When you're in edit mode, this bottom um, header of the 3D view window, uh, and it's called the header even though it's on the bottom uh, by default, um, contains your gizmo, which we're familiar with by now. But when you're in edit mode, it changes. So I'm gonna go back to object mode, in object mode, you get all of these little grid of squares that I'm highlighting with my mouse right now. Um, but when you go into edit mode, it changes, and you get options to either select uh, vertices or vertexes, uh, which is the button, that button right there, uh, or edges, or faces. And you'll notice that if you have faces selected, there'll be a dot on every face on your cube. Um, and if you have edges selected, those dots will go away. And if you have vertexes or vertices selected, the corners or all the vertices will get kind of highlighted with a little square. So I'm going to press A to deselect all, or I can press A to select all, well, have nothing selected. And I'm going to right click on any of the vertices, um, and I can move them. You'll see that the gizmo comes up, this uh, transform gizmo, and I can either rotate or scale uh, as well, but I'll just uh, use the the move gizmo. And, and now you can move these things in your object. So you can move uh, vertices, as we can see. You can move edges. So I'm going to switch to edge select mode and select the edge. Of course, I right click to select everything. And I can move faces. So I can grab the whole face and move it. And if I'm happy with the way that I changed my object, I have to press tab to go out of edit mode. Edit mode is uh, object specific, so every different object you need to go in to edit mode for that object, then back out, and then select a different object if you want to go into edit mode for that object. Um, so that's the basics of getting into edit mode. You press tab, and you get into edit mode, and then you choose if you want to be selecting faces, or edges, or vertices. It gets more complicated though, because this is how we can model any object you can possibly think of. I'm going to undo. Actually what I'll do is I'll delete this object. And I'll go Shift A and add a new mesh cube. There we go. You can model anything from a cube, and it's called box modeling. Uh, and you do that by well m multiple means, but one of the main ways is by extruding. Um, extruding would mean if you took, if you thought of this cube as a house, and I wanted to attach uh, or renovate a new and add, add a new garage, a garage to the, the side of the house. Um, I would take an edge or a side of my house, and I would extrude it. And extrude means, well, I'll show you. I'll press E, and E is extrude. Uh, make sure that you're only extruding when you are selecting faces. And E, and it extrudes the side. So you've kind of created an extension, or I've added a, added a garage to my house. Um, now I could select any side, and I could, could keep on extruding. And I can extrude some more. Pause them out some, some, and there we go. And so I'm creating any kind of a shape that I want. I'm going to undo, so Control Z. 
and I'm going to be a little bit systematic about it. I'm going to create kind of a simple dinosaur shape out of this cube. And then I'll do one more thing before I end the video. So I'm going to create a, a, a body for my dinosaur, and it's going to look very cubey. It's going to be like a, a blocky dinosaur. So I'm going to press E, and extrude it 1, and then press E again. And I'm just kind of making the same cube over and over and over again. You'll notice that if I go down, and this is new for you if you haven't done this before, I'm going to switch the shading mode to wireframe. Right now we're on solid. If you go to wireframe, you'll notice that there aren't any faces, so there's no dot running through the middle of each time I've extruded. So when you extrude, it kind of gets rid of the face that you extruded from, and but it will make a new one on the extruded face that you made. Um, so every time you extrude a square face, it makes one, two, three, four, and then a fifth face on the end or that you've extruded, but it doesn't leave the face on the inside of the, geom of the geometry. So I'll go back into solid mode, um, and I'm going to continue with my dinosaur body. So I'm going to select one, and then I'm going to hold shift down, and select, by right clicking of course, the other three. And now you're probably wondering what happens if I extrude three at once. Well, it um, in Blender 2.6, and ever since Blender 2.5, uh, it'll extrude them all together. So I'll press E, and kind of let go after I make another cube extension. And now if I grab one of these and try to move it, it's still attached to the to the other cubes that I extruded at the same time. There is no internal geometry going into my cube. Uh, that used to be an option, um, or you, it would ask you by default if you're using Blender 2.49 and before that. But now it's not an option, unless you know how. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select those again and extrude one more time. And now we kind of have a basic, really blocky shape for a body. And it, it's suited for that because I can do one, two, and three, and four legs. I held shift again to select more than, more than one face. And I'll press E to extrude some legs. And E again. And one more time. And this time it's just going to be feet. So I'm going to extrude, I'm going to click on that one, and that one, and that one, and that one by holding shift, of course. And E to extrude. And now I'm going to extrude a neck, so I'm going to select that one, and E to extrude, and again, and again, and, hmm, what should I do this time, maybe just that one, and I'm going to extrude kind of a snout for my pseudo dinosaur, any four-legged animal shape that I'm making right now. Um, so I have a basic, basic dinosaur shape, and maybe I'll add a tail. Uh, one, two, three, why not? And, of course, this is not how I would model a real dinosaur if I was trying to make something that was photoreal. Um, but it's a good start. And you're probably asking, well, how do I make it more detailed than this? I don't want a blocky-looking dinosaur, or whatever animal this is. Um, and the key is to start pushing and pulling vertices and edges and faces. So I might select edges now. And I'm going to kind of fix how this um, corner of his body is very kind of uh, uh, jagged or sticks out. So I'm going to select um, one, of the fi one of the edges and hold shift and select the other two. And I'll just move it in a little bit on the y-axis and then down a little bit. Same thing with the other side of the body. I'm going to move it in on the y-axis. My computer is being kind of hangy these days. There we go. And down a little bit, hopefully about the same as I did before. Maybe a little bit more out. Now, there's only so far I can go with this. I can select, maybe, we'll, maybe what I'll do is I'll select the top of his head. Maybe I'll move it up a little bit. And then I'll press S to scale that. So we have all the same tools. We have, I can use my S to scale, my R to rotate, and my G to grab, the same as any object in my scene. Um, I can scale faces, of course, I can scale edges, but I can't scale or rotate vertices or vertexes, because a vertex is only a single small, um, actually it has no volume, it's just a point in space. So you can't scale just a point, and you can't rotate just a point, because it doesn't have any geometry to it, it's just a uh, one single coordinate. 
um, in space. So um, that's the limit, the limit for vertices. Now I'm going to maybe shrink that one a little bit. And that's pretty much as good as we can do for the geometry that we have. So we have to start adding some more geometry to this dinosaur. Uh, and I'm going to do that by using what's called the loop cut tool. And the loop cut tool, uh, you can access it by pressing Control R while you're in edit mode and while you have faces selected. So I'm in, it, I'm in edit mode. I can tell that I am by looking right there and by the fact that I can see dots on all, on all my faces. And I'm going to press Control R. And notice when I press Control R and I hover my, my mouse over my mesh, um, I get this pink purpley line that goes all the way around an object depending on um, where I put my mouse and what edges I hover over. If I hover over one of these uh, edges that's going uh, the length of the tail, it looks like it's going to be making a line around the tail, and that's correct. What it's actually going to do is cut that point whenever I decide by clicking and then sliding to exactly where I want to do the cut. So I'm going to demonstrate that by adding a cut all the way down his middle. So it's going to go all the way around his head, down his neck, under his belly, and up along his tail, up back along his back, etc. So I'm going to click, and now it gives me the option to slide. I'm not looking at this from a very good view right now, but you can see that it's sliding. And I'm just going to right click to center it, and basically go in the, in the default very center. So right click, and there we go. So now that I have more geometry, I can do more things. I can make it more detailed. So I'm going to select edges, and I'm going to go on the top of his head and just select that one and that one and move them both up a little bit so he has a bit more of a rounded head. And select the front and move it forward a little bit so it's a little bit more rounded. Same thing with the back of his neck and the top of his tail. And you can see how you can add more detail this way. Um, so this is just a, supposed to be a very basic video in using edit mode. I'm going to go back to object mode. So I hope you give this a try. Um, and I'll come back in my next video and we'll model a more detailed head together. Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, please press uh, like or thumbs up right below the video window. Thanks a lot.